my god. <laughs> Underrated Brutal Hulking Slasher Victor Crowley from Hatchet Franchise explained in detail. Hatchet is essentially a slasher film, a subgenre of horror films that was loved and appreciated back in the 80s. <laughs> then came the 90s and the craze seemed to breathe its last breath, and by the early 2000s the genre would practically be dead had it not been for a few hits like 1996 film Scream or the 2000 film Final Destination. However, a few great anthologies could never revive a dying genre unless they really brought something that felt fresh and grounded. That's when director Adam Green came along, bringing us Hatchet in 2006, a film that was equally scary and funny, proof that slasher movies can be a great deal of fun. Well, you don't have any cash? No, I'm just not paying for this bullshit. Fans loved Hatchet for the over-the-top gore and plethora of killer one-liners, and in the course of 12 years there have been four Hatchet films with all of them receiving mixed to positive reviews. Green is a fan of filmmakers like Wes Craven and George A. Romero. His fanboyish nature reflects in his films, as well as in his unique storytelling device of starting the next film precisely at the last frame of the previous film, and in his extensive use of special effects instead of CGI. Kane Hodder plays the bad guy guy Victor Crowley in all four films. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> Who is Victor Crowley? Victor Crowley's story is equal parts tragic and horrifying. He was the unfortunate casualty of someone else's mistakes. Thomas and Cheyenne Crowley live in a small house in the Honey Island swamps of New Orleans. However, Cheyenne had terminal cancer, and the Crowleys kept a nurse named Lena to take care of Cheyenne. Thomas and Lena grew closer and started to have an affair. Eventually, Lena became pregnant. Thomas and Lena were so inconsiderate that they kissed the day Cheyenne died, but she wasn't dead yet. In anger and disgust, she cursed Lena and her unborn child before passing away. A few days later, Lena birthed her son, who was born with a neoplasm also known as a tumor disease, and she died presumably from the shock of the sight of her own baby. Mr. Crowley was ashamed of what he had done and felt miserable at the sight of his son who he named Victor. He would keep Victor hidden in the house, and the child grew into an adult in absolute seclusion, without any friends. However, as time passed, Thomas forgave himself and learned to love Victor. Still, no secret can be kept forever, and the news of Victor and his diseased skin spread in the neighborhood. On a Halloween night, a group of young trick-or-treaters came prowling to the Crowley residence and started to taunt and bully Victor from outside the house. They started throwing crackers and sparklers, and one of these was so close to the door that the door caught fire. However, Thomas reached the house just in time to save his son from the flames. He got a hold of a hatchet and began smashing the door, but he didn't realize that his son Victor was scared to death and was just sitting by the door. The swinging hatchet of Thomas Crowley hit Victor in his face, and he seemingly died from the wound. Thomas was furious because he had unintentionally killed his son and went after the young boys to seek revenge, though they denied everything. Thomas Crowley soon succumbed to his grief and guilt. <laughs> But Victor Crowley wasn't dead yet. He somehow revived only to become a serial murderer with low intelligence, great strength, and supernatural traits. It is believed that Victor Crowley became mentally stuck in the night on which he died and has since been looking for his father, killing anyone who comes close to his house. Up to now, Victor is known to have killed 64 people, including an unborn child. He has a psychopathic personality, but he once used to be a loving son. Victor's father was his only friend, and so he failed to get over his monumental loss. You killed my son. <coughs> the undead man has the mental capacity of a child, but he also possesses supernatural strength ripping off people's limbs as a piece of cake for him. Victor is a revenant, or a spirit looking for vengeance, and in this capacity he is practically immortal. Even when one of the characters named Mary Beth Dunstan beats his face to a pulp, Victor is somehow resurrected. Apart from this, he has heightened senses, awareness, and stamina. Of course, his favorite weapon is a hatchet, but Victor doesn't hesitate in using chainsaws, a belt sander, shovels, spears, or hammers. Hey. Um, that way. Hatchet, 2006 
Samson and his son Ainsley go out at night to hunt alligators in a swamp, but a mysterious being attacks them. A few days later, while celebrating Mardi Gras, a few friends decide to take a haunted tour of the swamp. The tours are usually run by Reverend Zombie, but due to a negligence suit filed against him, Zombie had asked them to go with an inexperienced tour guide named Sean. The friends meet other tourists, among who are two girls, Jen and Misty, who love taking off their tops without any significant reason, and a girl named Mary Beth. Mary Beth is actually Samson's daughter, and she has embarked on the journey with these people because an illegal tour was the only way to find her father and brother. Sean's inexperience shows when the tour takes a wrong turn, causing the group's boat to crash and start sinking. They evacuated the boat only to find that they were now standing right in front of the Crowley residence. Mary Beth tries to warn the others about the legend of Victor Crowley, but no one pays heed to her. The way we're going! <laughs> Why couldn't you keep your stories to yourself, huh? As the married couple Jim and Shannon Permadio approach the house, Victor appears and kills Jim, dissecting him into two halves by repeatedly swinging his hatchet. He then goes for Shannon and kills her by tearing her head apart. This forces the group of tourists to flee, but Shapiro gets separated from the group and Victor kills him by twisting his head to break his neck. Mary Beth and Ben find her family's remains in the house, and soon Victor finds them. He first mutilates Jenna's face with a custom-made belt sander and then severs Sean's leg with a shovel before decapitating him. He held Jenna and banged her face on the shovel that was standing upright from the ground. The others try to find weapons to stop the supernatural killer, and Ben comes across gasoline in the tool shed. But Victor, having killed Misty, uses body parts as melee weapons against Ben. Ben manages to shower him with gasoline, and they set Victor on fire. Unfortunately, a sudden rain extinguished the flame, though the brief danger did give Mary Beth, Ben, and Marcus time to flee. Pursuing them, Victor catches and pins down Ben, but Mary Beth and Marcus manage to rescue him. Unfortunately, Victor gets hold of Marcus and tears his arms apart before smashing him to death. Ben and Mary Beth are later able to stop Victor, impaling him on a pole. However, Victor, not yet out for the count, kills Ben and proceeds to lure Mary Beth to the water with Ben's severed arm. <laughs> Although the film was released in 2006, it bore all the trademarks of 80s gore fests. The film excels because of its heightened humor, coupled with all the horror, decapitations, blood, and torn limbs. So, despite having immense amounts of body horror, Hatchet doesn't feel nauseating because there are plenty of funny moments and even a few scenes with topless women. You might be surprised to know that writer and director Adam Green made sure he didn't use any CGI in the film, apart from when it was necessary to remove the on-screen wires and sightings of the cameras. Hatchet 2, 2010 Picking up where the first film left off, the second installment sees Victor attack Mary Beth. She manages to escape and is saved by Jack Cracker, who takes her to his cabin. After he learns Mary Beth's last name, he asks her to leave, instructing her that only Reverend Zombie can help her. Get out! What? Get out of my house right now! He then begins to watch a videotape that he found in the swamp, but is attacked by Victor as he does. The villain pulls out Jack's intestines and strangles him with them, until Jack is completely decapitated. Meanwhile, Mary Beth reaches Zombie's shop and tells him about the ordeal. He reveals some startling information to Mary Beth, that her father was one of the boys who went to the Crowley residence the day Victor died. How could you know? How do you know that my dad was involved? Mary Beth tells Zombie that she wants to go back and retrieve the remains of her brother and father, and he agrees to her wishes, gathering a group of hunters, including amongst others Sean's brother Justin, Mary Beth's uncle Bob, and one Trent Graves, whom Zombie pays $10,000 to join the venture. As the group look for Crowley's house, Zombie explains that it was Bob, Trent, and Mary Beth's father who started the fire all those years ago. According to him, Crowley's soul would be able to rest in peace if he kills Trent and Bob. Meanwhile, Victor starts piling up bodies, or well, the body parts of the hunting party. He kills one by impaling his face with his hatchet, mutilating another's face with the boat propeller. Two of the hunters were having sex when Victor found them, and the killer proceeded to decapitate one and chop the other with his trusted hatchet. Another two were sent to God using a chainsaw. Victor then arrives at the cabin and attacks the four remaining characters, though Zombie is able to pull Mary Beth out and shut the door. Inside, Victor kills Bob, Trent, and Justin. 
Mary Beth reveals that Bob wasn't her real uncle and only his father's best friend. Bob was my daddy's best friend. They conclude that Victor's soul didn't get the revenge it needed and must still be around them. Victor approaches and rips out Zombie's spine. However, Mary Beth strikes Victor's face with his own hatchet and he falls to the ground. She continues to swing the hatchet until his face turns into a bloody pulp, at which point she shoots him in the head with a shotgun. The film ends with Victor's possible death. One might expect a great deal of blood and guts from a slasher film like Hatchet 2, but writer and director Green elevates the fun by refusing to limit the sequel. It is not simply a gore fest only suitable for gore hounds. We aren't saying that the violence is mild, but what's special about this film is that the violence and gore are high quality, well crafted, and nothing feels forced or out of place. The humor from the first film has been retained just like the plot, which carries on seamlessly from the events in the 2006 film. Hatchet 3, 2013 At the beginning of the third film, Mary Beth leaves after shooting Victor and finds the mutilated bodies of the crew. Surprisingly, she soon hears Victor's growling voice come from the woods and he attacks her. Mary Beth manages to push Victor on his chainsaw and his body is cut down the middle. Killed him. She then leaves and goes to the Jefferson Parish Police Department, where Sheriff Fowler accuses her of being responsible for the deaths of the Taurus group and the hunting party. Despite reiterating her horrific ordeal of the past few days, no one believes her, at least no one apart from the sheriff's wife, Amanda. She tells Mary Beth that it was her father's idea to set the house on fire many years before, and he had intended to calm Victor's soul by giving him Thomas Crawley's ashes, but he was not able to complete this mission. <laughs> Since Mary Beth is the last survivor of the family, only she can complete her father's unfinished task and put an end to the Victor Crowley problem. The man who caused all of this, you are the only one who can end it. Meanwhile, the sheriff heads to the swamp with paramedics and the first responders. They bag Victor's body and take him on board an ambulance boat. However, Victor comes to life once again and mutilates most of the cops and paramedics. The huge number of deaths at the swamp has not gone unnoticed, and the government sends a SWAT team of five men and one woman led by Tyler Hawes to deal with the killer. However, even the SWAT team is no match for Crowley, who kills everyone except Hawes and the female member of the team, Doherty. Later, Victor pins down Hawes and rips out his skull and spine. In this confusion, a deputy named Schneiderman fires a rocket at Crowley, but it misses and hits one of their own. The explosion blows up the house, burying Crowley under the rubble, though not for very long. Crowley emerges from the debris and kills Schneiderman and the survivors run for their lives. Meanwhile, Amanda and Mary Beth retrieve Mr. Crowley's ashes from his long-distant cousin named Abbott McMullen. Back at the swamp, Crowley chases the sheriff, Andrew, and Doherty, cornering them by the ambulance boat. The sheriff makes a call requesting the National Guard to come, lying about being attacked by crazy gunmen. Amanda and Mary Beth arrive at the site, forcing the sheriff to try and leave, but Crowley beheads him. Finally, after much struggle, Mary Beth manages to spread Thomas Crowley's ashes on his son's vengeful spirit. Crowley begins to melt and Mary Beth shoots him, this time killing him for good. The film ends with the arrival of the National Guard, but the audience is left to wonder if Mary Beth will survive or succumb to her injuries. The only definite survivor of the massacre is Andrew, who remained hidden from Crowley's eyes. Although Adam Green still wrote the story for this one, the directorial reins were taken over by B.J. McDonnell. The change in directorial style was certainly evident on the screen. McDonnell intended to make the film a full-fledged action flick, blending in elements of horror. Almost the entire film is about cops, SWAT teams, rockets, and the National Guard. This made for a paradigm shift in the way the critics viewed the Hatchet series. While they bashed the film for its overpronounced gore and violence, audiences came away with mixed responses. <laughs> Hatchet 4 – Victor Crowley, 2017 Unlike the first three films, which began exactly where the previous one left off, making the different installments feel like one long episode, this last one takes place a few years after the incidents of the third film. Andrew, who survived Crowley by hiding, has become a celebrity and has written a book about his experiences at Honey Island Swamp. 
He appears on a program named The Sabrina Show, which his ex-wife Sabrina hosts. Meanwhile, Chloe, Alex, and Rose are aiming to make a B-movie about Victor Crowley and seek Andrew's help to shoot a trailer. Ma'am, we are making a movie about the 2007 massacre, and we just need a man. I can't wait to see it, Wes Craven. Andrew, his manager Kathleen, Sabrina, and her crew, consisting of Austin, Casey, Jay, and Zach, leave on a chartered plane. But as fate would have it, their plane crashes in Honey Island Swamp, and their worst nightmare comes to life when they hear the growling voice of the infamous murderer. In this film, Crowley comes back to life, possibly because Rose's phone was constantly playing a video in which Reverend Zombie was reciting a voodoo curse that had the power to resurrect. Crowley's first victim is Alex, who he kills with a claw hammer. Next, he chases Chloe and smashes her head against the plane's window. However, he doesn't kill her, keeping her alive as bait. Clearly, the version of the villain we see here has grown a bit more intelligent since the previous films. Kathleen begins to panic and attempts to leave the plane, and as Austin tries to stop her, he is beheaded. Crowley also thwarts Kathleen's attempts to call the police, slashing off her arms. And then he goes on to sink the plane, drowning Casey and her unborn child. Bastard. In the end, the swamp tour guide hired by the filming crew acts heroically, jumping with Crowley into a turbine. His and Crowley's blood splatter Rose and Andrew. The film is outrageously hilarious and incredibly pieced together. Adam Green came back as the director and elevated the film to beautiful levels. She is fierce. Future of the Hatchet franchise In the mid credit scene, we see Mary Beth Dunstan watch the news report of the latest incident at the swamp, knowing that she must once again take on her old enemy. I've been waiting for you, motherfucker. This scene gave us hope that another Hatchet film is on the way, but a mid-credit or post-credit scene is not always proof that a sequel will be made. In an interview, Adam Green confirmed that there would be a sequel, calling it a safe bet. Fortunately for us, Green is a person who uses sequels to expand the story, and makes them with as much dedication as he did with the first. Green likes to wait a few years between each installment, proceeding when everyone working is fit to come back. His confirmation of another sequel came in May last year, and now that the pandemic has started to ease up a bit, we expect filming to start anytime this year or early next year. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe.